For photographers, perhaps some of the most exciting new features inside of Photoshop CS6 are located in Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw allows us to non-destructively correct, enhance, and process our pictures in some incredibly powerful ways. Let's start off by taking a look at how we can work with Adobe Camera Raw with this photograph here. It's titled Wedding.dng. Go ahead and select that photograph and then press Command R to Mac, Control R on Windows. One of the first things you almost always want to do in Camera Raw is go to the full screen mode. You can do so by clicking on this icon here or by pressing the F key. All right, well, once you're in the full screen mode, what I want to highlight is that the controls in Adobe Camera Raw have changed. In particular, the controls for the basic panel. If you look at these controls, you'll notice that the names have changed. Now, it's not just that they've renamed things, but really they've reworked the Adobe Camera Raw engine so that it's able to extract much more information out of your file. Well, here what we can do is we can use these controls or sliders to change the picture. To increase the exposure, click and drag to the right. To increase the contrast, again, drag to the right. To decrease that, move that to the left. If ever you want to reset one of these values, we'll simply double click that slider and it will take it back to the default setting. And that brings me to a really important point. You'll notice that by default, all of these sliders, all of these controls, they're zeroed out. In the previous version of Camera Raw, they were really all over the map, so it was hard to know where to begin. All right, so here we can see we have exposure and contrast. Then we have highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Well, what's this about? Well, if we work with highlights, again, clicking and dragging to the right, the highlights or the brighter whites become whiter or drag to the left. And what we're going to be able to do is to recover some detail in some of those highlights. To see the before and after, you can click on that preview button. So here's before and now here's after. We have more detail in this area of the image. We can also do something which is a little bit less intense by decreasing that amount. All right, well, what about shadows? Drag to the right, the shadows become brighter. Drag to the left and they become darker. So here again, we can recover or bring in some shadow detail by dragging this to the right. Then we have whites and blacks. These work in a very similar way. Drag the whites to the right, and you can see how, again, I'm brightening up those whites or I'm bringing them down. In this case, these have a little bit of a broader reach compared to highlights and shadows, but still work in a very similar way. Now, because of that, I think it's helpful to really try to understand these controls. Because they have new names, they work in new ways, what I want to do is take a look at a demo file, which is a grayscale. And I want to see if we can't reverse engineer or deconstruct how these sliders actually work. So here what we're going to do is go ahead and apply these adjustments by clicking Done. And then in the next movie, we'll take a look at how we can modify this particular demo file, grayscale.jpg. All right, I'll see you in the next movie. Because the basic adjustment controls are so significant, I don't think it will suffice to simply show you how they work. What I want to do here is really teach you how you can use them. I'm going to be working with two files. The first one is basicadjustments.tiff. I'm going to click on that and then press the spacebar key to open this up in a larger view. This is a screen grab of the basic panel. And here I just want to reiterate that these controls start zeroed out. And the way that they work is when you drag to the right, things become brighter. Drag to the left, things become darker. Okay, we'll press spacebar again to exit out of that view. Let's go to this demo file, grayscale.jpg. If we make some changes to this file, it can help us understand these controls in an interesting way. Here, let's go ahead and open this up in Camera Raw. To do so, press Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. And I want to really focus in on these controls here. Okay, well, what about exposure? Well, if we click and drag this to the right, we can see that we can really make dramatic adjustments to our photograph. I mean, that is intense. Drag to the left, the same thing. So the exposure control, well, it's really powerful. It's going to do a lot. In other words, as you work with this, you may not swing this very far in order to be able to make the changes that you need. It's a powerful tool. 
To reset it, double click the tab and it will go back to zero. Contrast we already know about. Drag to the right increases the contrast, drag to the left and it decreases. What becomes more interesting are highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. In order to really focus in on how these work, what I want to do is turn on the clipping indicators. You can do so by clicking on these icons at the top of the histogram. Currently that's showing me where I have clipping or loss of detail in this grayscale on this file. Well, what is highlights going to do for me? Well, if we drag this to the right, what's going to happen is we're going to have more clipping in the image. Drag it all the way over, you can see that primarily it's targeting the brighter tones. If you look at this grayscale, well, it goes to about here. Well, let's then reset that and compare that, say, to whites. I'll go ahead and do the same adjustment. This time I'll go all the way up to 100. You can see that this one is getting lower in this grayscale. In other words, it's going further into a different tonal region. So again, typically you can think of this highlights control is one that allows you to recover or to work with the brightest tones. If you have tones which are too bright, drag it to the left. It will then recover those. Notice there isn't any clipping in this area. The same thing is true with our shadows. We can either brighten those shadows up or we can darken them down. Notice how it affects the rest of the histogram, but it really targets those deeper or darker tones. Let's reset these sliders here and then look at whites. Well, whites, we saw how we can either brighten those up or, of course, we can darken those down. Next, we have blacks. Blacks allows us to work on this area of our image. Again, it's a little bit higher than the other one. It reaches a little bit further. So in a sense, you can think of these controls this way. Highlights and shadows, they're subtle. They're on the extremes. Whites and blacks, they're just in a little bit further in regards to their reach or in regards to the area that they're modifying. All right, well, now that we know a little bit about these controls, let's take a look at how we can apply this to a photograph, and let's do that in the next movie. Now that we know a little bit about the Adobe Camera Raw basic controls, let's take what we've learned and apply it to our photographs. We'll be working with this picture here. It's rinkon underscore surfer dot dng. To open this one up in Camera Raw, press Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. Well, with this particular photograph, this portrait, I like the expression, I like the composition, yet I want more detail in this area. In order to do that, we could increase the exposure. Yet when we increase the exposure, something happens. This side of the image, well, it becomes too bright. Well, we can modify that by using these controls. Let's, though, first work on the shadows. If we want more detail in our shadows or our blacks, well, we can drag these sliders to the right. We can bring more light into those areas of the image. One of the challenges is that when you brighten an image, you also need to add a bit of contrast, otherwise it can look a little fake. So here I'll go ahead and increase the contrast a little bit as well. All right, well, what about the bright side of the frame? Well, here we can use highlights and whites. I'll go ahead and click and drag this down. You can see how I'm bringing more detail into that area of the picture. So as you use these controls, it's a little bit of a give and take using them together to try to come up with a nice combination. You can also modify them after the fact, after you dial in the amount of contrast you're going to use and also how much light you're going to bring into the shadows. All right, well, after having made those adjustments, just a few more here. I'm going to drag my temperature slider over to the right just to warm this up a little bit as well. Well, now we can view the before and after by pressing the P key or by clicking on this icon here for preview. Here it is, our before and then our after. And by using these controls, it allowed us to create this a different type of exposure. And here you can see how these specific controls allow us to tap into different parts of the image. And here's what's really powerful. What's happening with this latest version of Adobe Camera Raw is that it's able to extract more information from the raw file so that we can swing these sliders or move these sliders in even more dramatic ways. Also, from the get-go, it's giving us a better starting point. In order to illustrate that, I want to show you another file. 
All right, well, let's click Done with this image and go back to the Adobe Bridge. Here I have a demo file or some screen grabs of this image processed in Camera Raw and CS5 and Camera Raw with CS6. Here's the actual photograph. Well, one of the problems with this picture was that the front part of the car had some loss of detail. I used to use this image as a great example of a way to recover highlights. Well, I opened this image up in Adobe Photoshop CS6 Camera Raw, and here's what I discovered. Well, in CS5, yes, we had clipping, loss of detail in the front of the car. You can see that by the red highlighted area. In CS6, the same image, yet a different Camera Raw processing engine, well, that problem is completely solved, and I didn't even do anything. In other words, the way that Adobe Camera Raw taps into the data in that RAW file is more intelligent. It allows you to extract more information out of the file, which gives you a better starting point and also more flexibility when it comes to modifying those photographs. Now that you've seen the Adobe Camera Raw basic controls in action, you may want to go back to some of your older images, which you processed using a previous version of Camera Raw. You may want to update the way you process those files. Well, let's take a look at how we can do that here, how we can update the process version. We'll be working with these two images, Tahoe underscore 01 and Tahoe underscore 02. Click on one. Hold down Command or Control, Command on a Mac, Control on Windows, and then select both of those images. Then press Command R on a Mac, Control R on Windows. Now here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see this exclamation point. That's telling me that this image has been processed by a previous version of Camera Raw. In order to illustrate the difference, what I also want to do here is turn on the clipping indicator icons here, or click on those. This shows me I have loss of detail in this area of the snow. In order to update the process version, we'll go ahead and click on this exclamation point and it will update this to the latest version of Camera Raw. Now in doing that, all of a sudden, all of that area, all of that loss of detail, well, it's gone. You also may have noticed that it changed all of these controls and settings. Well, what's the deal? What's happened here? Well, let's look at that other image and let's deconstruct this a little further. This is a photograph, by the way, when we went to visit Truckee in California and we were playing in the snow. I like the emotion of this picture, but we have this loss of detail. Well, with the default settings, you can see I have recovery, fill light, blacks, and really these settings are all over the map. Once you click on this exclamation point, it updates that to the most recent process version and it changes these controls. It also zeroes everything out. So again, this image, just by default, is at a better place. Now, if we wanted to further modify this, I think this photograph could use a little bit of contrast. Also might want to bring my highlights down. I might want a little bit more in the snow there as well as with my whites. And then I might want to darken up some of those shadows just a touch here. Again, just modifying a few of those settings. So once you've updated the process version, what happens is the way this image is processed has changed then you may need to make some other adjustments because these controls, well, they work in a different way. Let's go ahead and apply some adjustments to the other image as well. With this one, I'll go ahead and bring my highlights down, add a little bit of contrast. And again, just make some adjustments so that this image looks visually interesting to my eye. And really, I'm interested in just trying to have a nice photograph here. To view the preview of the before and after, do you remember the shortcut? It's the P key. So here's our before, now here's our after. After having clicked on the exclamation point to update the process version, and then after having made any needed adjustments, all that we need to do is to simply click Done in order to apply those adjustments to these images.
Another much welcome new feature in Adobe Camera Raw has to do with clarity. And here we'll be working with two images and we'll explore how we can use the clarity slider in Adobe Camera Raw. We'll be working with this file, gray.jpg, and also ringconsurfer.dng. So hold down Command or Control and click on both of those images. And then open these up in Camera Raw by pressing Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. Let's start off with this demo file. This is a file that I created in Photoshop. I simply made a few shapes, filled those with a gradient and posterized one. And I did that because it creates a nice way to kind of see how clarity works. Here I'll go ahead and zoom in on this so we get a little bit more of a close-up view. Well, the clarity slider is interesting. What it allows us to do is to add mid-tone contrast. Let me show you what I mean. Click and drag this to the right. We see that we have this nice texture in this mid-tone area. We can also see that in these other grayscales as well. Here is that before and then the after. And one of the things that's great about clarity is that now it deals with artifacts and halos in a much better way. In other words, in the previous version of Adobe Camera Raw, with 100 points of clarity, you would have this drastic halo around the edge. Well, here you can see it's really tight, it's really small, and it's not that problematic. In the previous version, it really was. So clarity works much more effectively. All right, well, what about negative clarity? Well, you might want to use negative clarity if you have a close-up beauty shot, and if you just want to soften it a little bit. Again, this is going to remove or reduce texture or mid-tone contrast. Okay, well, let's then take a look at a photograph. Let's look at this picture here. What I want to do is zoom in on this picture a little bit. With this photograph, let's exaggerate. First, negative clarity. Everything becomes soft and weird. It doesn't really work. When it comes to negative clarity, you have to be careful. You don't want to go too low, but if you want to slightly soften it, perhaps you could apply a negative 10 or 15. Again, that could create a flattering look on the right picture. This isn't the right picture. For this photograph, we want the texture and the detail. So I'm going to increase the clarity. Now this photograph, I imagine, will look well with maybe 15 or 20 points of clarity, right about there. Nice detail, and we can see all the texture on the rocks and everything. That looks really good. Yet one of the things that happens here that we need to pay attention to is that it's actually changing the color of the photograph. Let me exaggerate and show you what I mean. If we crank this up to 100, well, we can really see it now, right? the picture, it's kind of muted. It looks almost like an HDR photograph. I'll double click the hand tool, which will zoom out to fit and view so you can see that in the entire image. Here is the original photograph, and then here it is with 100 points of clarity. Now for certain pictures desaturating when you're adding clarity or this mid-tone contrast, it could help out. It could kind of offset that oversaturation, which sometimes happens when you increase contrast. Yet with some images, let's say you don't want this HDR type of a look. Well, what you might need to do is to dial in just the right amount of clarity, let's say 15 or 20 points, and then bring up the vibrance and a little bit of the saturation to kind of offset for that desaturation, which happens when you introduce or when you add clarity to your photographs. You'll want to really experiment with this clarity slider because it's a lot stronger than it was previously. In the previous version, when I would teach about it, I would say, you know what, be careful with this. Apply a low amount. Well, now, as you can see with this picture, you can really get away with adding a lot of clarity. And with some photographs, this can help you create a really distinct or distinguished look. So again, experiment with this control and try to find that right spot for your photographs. And once you've found that spot and perhaps added a little bit of vibrance or saturation or made any other needed adjustments in order to apply them, all that you need to do is to simply click Done to exit out of Camera Raw and to apply those adjustments to your photographs. Here we're going to take a look at how we can use the adjustment brush in order to paint in new adjustments that weren't available in previous versions of Camera Raw. I will be working with these two files here. Let's go ahead and open them up in Camera Raw. You can do so by pressing Command-R on a Mac or Control-R on Windows. 
With this first photograph, I'm going to go ahead and click on it a few times in order to zoom in and press the spacebar key to reposition. Next, what I want to do is work on the exposure on the left side of the image. I'll go ahead and click on the adjustment brush icon or press the K key to select it. And here you'll notice we have many more options, exposure, contrast, highlights, so on and so forth. What we can do is select an option. Let's say I want to work on the highlights. I want to decrease the brightness of the highlights. I'll choose a low highlight value. And then for my brush, I'll go ahead and scroll down here. I want to have a relatively small brush size with a lot of feather and then my flow pretty low. This allows me to paint these adjustments in successively. In other words, I can make one adjustment or one brush stroke and then I can go back and paint back over that again. And so again, all that I'm interested in doing is trying to darken up this side of the face. And I'm doing so by using this slider here, which in this case is our highlights. As you're making these adjustments, you shouldn't see anything really dramatic until you click the preview. Here's before and then after. So we're really diminishing the brightness value or these brighter whites over here on the side of the face. If you want to bring these out even more, well, by all means, change the slider. Here you can see we can control those whites, and you can see I can either darken them or brighten them up. And what I'm looking for here is something which is relatively subtle. I'll go ahead and decrease the exposure just a little bit there as well to try to get this a little bit more close in regards to the overall exposure. Now let's say we want to make another type of adjustment. Perhaps we want to work on the eyes. Well, let's double click the zoom tool. That will take us right up close to the face here. To make another adjustment, click on the adjustment brush tool, and then I want to choose an option. In this case, I'm going to go for contrast and maybe some sharpness. So I'll click on the plus icon for contrast. That creates an adjustment with an increased contrast, also increase my clarity, my saturation, my sharpness. Why don't we add a little bit of brightness as well? Once we've done that, we can go ahead and hover over the eyes, and I'll increase the flow so you can see this a little bit more dramatically. I'm just going to paint over this area of the image. As I'm painting, I'm careful not to paint on any other part of the image. I also don't want to go over the top so that the eyes look unnatural. In other words, if we increase the exposure too much, you can see how things start to look a little bit strange. So we want it to look bright, nice, adding all this clarity, saturation, and contrast and sharpness. Again, just increasing these amounts until we have a nice look there. Click on the preview icon. Here we have our before and then after. And with those eyes, you can really see how we brought those to life. So all of these controls give us this new flexibility. All right, well, what about those situations, say, like this next image here? I'll go ahead and click on it. And then I'm gonna zoom into the face area here or just double click the zoom tool to go to 100%. Well, when I do that, and when I go to the adjustment brush, all of a sudden, all of those other options are gone. I have limited controls that I can paint into this image. Why is that? Well, that's because this photograph has been processed by a previous version of Photoshop. To change this or to update the process version, which you'll need to do in order to use this tool, you have to click on this exclamation point icon. Once I do that, watch these controls right here. I'll go ahead and click on that. And then all of a sudden, well, now I have this whole huge new range of controls. I can paint in noise reduction to a specific area. So if I wanted to work on a particular part of the image, well, I'll go ahead and click on that option, and I could paint away the noise in a particular part of my photograph. As you can imagine, this really all of a sudden makes this adjustment brush tool that much more versatile and powerful because it gives you more specific control about what you want to paint into an image. The last thing I want to highlight here is that if ever you're making an adjustment and you need to make a new adjustment, well, just click on this new button here that allows you to create a new adjustment with different settings, which you can then paint into your photograph. After you've modified your image, all that you need to do to apply those settings is to click Done. That will then apply and save those settings with these files. In order to further illustrate or highlight 
how we can work with the adjustment brush and the new settings that we have in this tool. We're going to be working with this file here. It's titled moray.jpg. This image has a moray pattern. And we're going to look at how we can use the adjustment brush in order to paint away this problem. Let's open this up in Camera Raw. To do so, press Command R on a Mac, Control R on Windows. Next, I'm going to double click the zoom tool, which will take this to a 100% view. The moray pattern kind of looks like this watery, strange pattern, which is on top of the fabric. That pattern, it isn't part of the fabric, but it's something that happens sometimes in digital capture, especially when we're photographing different materials. So what we can do in order to remove that is we can select the adjustment brush. Next, we'll go down to the moray reduction options here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus icon. Next, after I've chosen that, I'll increase my brush amount and also my brush size. Then I'm going to go ahead and paint over the image. Now, as I do that, you can see that this image is changing. I'm going to decrease the brush size by pressing the left bracket key. Next, I'll go ahead and paint over this edge here. I'm just going to paint away this problematic moray pattern that we can see on top of the photograph. And we could make our way through the entirety of the image, painting away all of this problem. Now, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be able to remove everything. But it's doing a great job at removing those distracting lines and all of those colors. Let's take a look. Here we have that before and then now the after. One of the things, though, that I'm noticing is that the color is a bit more muted. It's almost like I lost a little bit of saturation. Well, no big deal. After the fact, after we've painted away that adjustment, we can go ahead and increase the color saturation in order to bring back some of the original life or vitality of that color. Of course, with this image, what we'd want to do is after we dialed in those settings, is we'd want to change our brush size and make sure we get all of this out. And we'd want to move around the image so that we could successfully remove it all. Initially, though, what I like to do is to paint away a large area just to make sure that this is going to work and then get into all those details. As you progress, you'll almost always want to press that P key to look at your before and after to make sure that you're going in a good direction. And as this illustrates, we can use the adjustment brush in order to paint in some really interesting corrections or enhancements to our photographs. Here we're going to take a look at how we can use the point tone curve in order to make precise adjustments to our photographs in Adobe Camera Raw. We'll be working with this file, photographer.dng. So let's open it up in Camera Raw by pressing Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. We want to navigate to the Tone Curve panel. To do so, you can click on the tab up here. It's the second tab in the list. And you want to click on the sub-tab, not parametric, but point. The Point Tone Curve panel is actually really powerful. And this is a new feature which gives us the ability to make curve-like adjustments that we have done previously in Photoshop, now in Camera Raw. Let me explain. Here you can see this curve line. To add a point, simply click and then drag. Drag up, it becomes brighter. Drag down, it becomes darker. If ever you want to remove a point, well, you can just click and drag that off, and it will reset that curve or reset that area of the curve. You can also work with your endpoints which can be really helpful when it comes to recovering detail. Here I could darken that up or also brighten this, and you can see how these brighter areas are becoming pure white, or I can bring in some detail into those areas. Again, it's very similar to working in curves in Photoshop. So what do we want to do with this image? Well, let's say with this photograph, what I want to do is just darken up some of these brighter tones and then perhaps modify some of my darker tones as well. Just a subtle little adjustment. But then I decide I also want to change the color, the feel of this image. Well, to do that, you can go to your channel pull-down menu. And here we can navigate to our various channels. Let's start off with red. Well, just to illustrate, what you can do here is click and drag up. By dragging towards the word red, you're increasing the amount of red in the photograph. Drag away from that word, and then we'll add the other complementary color, which is cyan. You also notice that we have this curve which stretches across the spectrum of this image. 
well, if I just want my brighter colors or brighter tones to be a color and my darker ones to be something different, you can see how we can start to do that. We can map these adjustments into specific areas of our image. Okay, well, this doesn't look very good. Let me remove these points. How do we do that? You remember, right? Just click and drag them off to the side there. And with this photograph, what I want to do is just bring in some nice warm red here. I don't want it so much though in the shirt. So I'll go ahead and click and drag this down for my brighter tone. So it's primarily in the deeper colors in this picture. Next, I want to add a little bit of yellow as well. So to do that, we'll go to the blue yellow channel. We know that if we drag up, we're going to add blue. Drag down, we're going to add yellow. Now we need to be subtle with this adjustment. So I'll go ahead and just simply add a little bit of yellow there. Again, just changing the overall look and feel or mood of this picture. It's subtle and precise, but that's exactly why I came here, to make those type of adjustments using these controls. All right, well, let's look at our preview. Here we have it. There's before, and then here's after. If ever after you've made some color adjustments, let's say you want to go back to the overall contrast or tone, we'll just go back to the composite RGB view. And then here we could make those changes. We could go ahead and brighten these up if we wanted to have a little bit more brightness in this photograph. And then of course, click on this icon or press the P key to look at your before and after. This will be a quick movie as we briefly take a look at how we can use lens corrections in order to correct different parts of our image. In particular, I'm going to focus in on chromatic aberration or that color fringing that you see in your images sometimes. Let's go ahead and open this file up in Camera Raw. Press Command R on the Mac, Control R on Windows. Next, what I want to do is navigate to the Lens Corrections tab. You can do so by clicking on this icon here. Now, one of the things that's great about lens corrections is that it allows you to choose this option, which enables the lens profile corrections. It taps into this database, figures out your camera and your lens combination, and then tries to make any needed adjustments. And here you can see it did a pretty good job. Here's our before and then our after. Yet if I select the zoom tool and go ahead and zoom on in on one of these areas, say around the edge of the photograph, you can see that I have this real distinct problem. I have this color fringing. It's red on one side, cyan on another. In the previous version of Adobe Camera Raw, we had controls in order to dial away the chromatic aberration. Well, in this version, it's gotten a lot better. Now we only have a checkbox. And in order to remove the chromatic aberration, literally all that we need to do is to click on that checkbox and now it's gone. It's taken care of. In other words, it's taken out the guesswork so that we no longer need to use these sliders. It's doing all of this for us behind the scenes. And this is yet another example of how the Camera Raw engine, well, it's just gotten better. So as you work with your photographs, be sure to turn this option on so that you can take advantage of that new way to process and to clean up your photographs. After you've made that adjustment, you'll want to double click perhaps the hand tool to zoom out just to evaluate the image in its entirety. Take a look at your preview, here is our before and after. The image is now in a much better place.